Hi guys, welcome to my unedited one-shot videos. Today I'm going to show you how to use a crimp bead to attach a clasp onto stringing wire. Our stringing wire that we use at the shop is called Softflex. It's a professional quality beading wire, which is uh, multiple strands of nylon, I mean, I'm sorry, multiple strands of stainless steel enclosed in nylon, which makes it nice and flexible. All right, for starters, we are always gonna talk about what you will need to complete this project. Um, I've already strung this, so you'll need whatever it is you wanna clasp on. Maybe it's a bracelet, maybe it's a necklace. It's the same, um, or an anklet. It's the same approach no matter what, anytime you're using bead, bead wire. Uh, I've got a clasp. Today I chose a lobster claw, kind of big, just so that you could see it better. I've got two little crimp beads. These are plated crimps. They are two by two tube. We sell them in packs. And then for my choice today, I'm going to be using a little chain on the end. You could also, if that wasn't your choice, you could also use a little ring here as long as it's soldered closed. Um, don't want to ever attach soft flex straight to a jump ring because this wire is so thin it can pop out of the jump ring. So in my case today, I'll be using this lobster claw connected to this chain. And I've got my little uh, go back through beads or finishing beads. Uh, you'll hear us call them both. For starters, you want to make sure you at least have three inches of wire here in order to do your clasp. That's just a generous amount. No, you do not use all of it, but um, it's so helpful, especially if you're just starting this kind of project, it's so helpful to have extra. So you can see I cut mine with plenty on the end. All right. The tools you'll need are a flat nose plier. This is a flattened crimp approach. This is not using the crimping tool. That's a completely different ball game. And we're using a very fine, precise cutter. I love this cutter that we sell. It gets right down where it needs to and can cut just the tiniest little tip. So we love this one. All right, I'm going to start by putting on my go back through beads. The reason I'm doing that is because this particular project is freshwater pearls and this wire will not fit through this twice. If you have beads here that it will fit through twice, that's fine. You don't need these little ending beads. A lot of people put these on anyway, just because they like it to have a finished look at the back. Mine's multi-purpose. I like the way that looks, but I also need this in order to do my clasping technique. All right, I put my two little beads at the end. I'm going to put one crimp bead and my clasp. Slide it down. Okay. Now my goal is to keep this clasp over here and go back through just the crimp bead. After I've made it through the crimp bead, I want to slide my two ending beads over both strands. See that? Both strands. Now I'm going to pull this slack out until I have just a nice loop. This I think is too big, but if I go too small, then it becomes rigid and this can't move around. So our goal is something in between. See that, that size loop? And this will change with every type of clasp you use. But your goal is you want your clasp to be moving freely at the end. That's how you decide how big this loop should be, okay? All right, crimp bead looped through and I'm holding it in place. I'm gonna come in and take my flat nose pliers and slide it over here. Now notice the direction I've got this in. I've got this looking at me so that when I smash this down, you're gonna see it turns into sort of a U shape. Now I'm squeezing this here. Squeeze this plier as much as you can. And it's turned into a little square. And you can see the positioning now. It's got that nice loop that will hold this in. And if I rotate it, you see it's nice and flat. And we want to make sure you can never see inside of that crimp because if you can, that means you were too gentle and you need to squeeze it more. Now I will take my precise cutters and just cut only, be careful when you're cutting because sometimes people cut their main strand. You want to cut only your excess. 
so I've cut the excess off. And now I'm left with a very clean end with the little wire buried right in the end here. So the first end of soft flex or beaded wire stringing is always a little bit easier than the second. So here's how you do the second. I'm going to slide my beads down. Here's a look at how that looks at the end. Is it pretty? Now it's time to do the second side. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Two beads go right onto the end. One crimp bead. And my chain. Again, this also could be just a little ring. It's whatever you choose. I enjoy using chain because I think it gives the wearer some flexibility. That way, if I'm making this for someone and I don't know who it's for, or making it to sell in our store, this allows this to be about a 17 inch um, at the shortest, but as much as a 19 inch at the longest. All right, back to crimping. I've got my chain captured in here. Come on back, there we go. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna go back through here. Now notice, I've got this laid out flat and I've got it in the shape that it's gonna be worn in. That's very important because if I do this next step and I have it long ways like this, I risk making it so tight that then when I go to put it on, it's very stiff and we don't want that. So we always wanna put anything we're doing crimps on, even if it's a bracelet, I want you to put it in the shape of the bracelet. So in order to remind ourselves of that, this is one of my little tips. I say clasp before you crimp. So I'm going to clasp this closed. And now I'm going to be able to do this end with a little bit more confidence that it won't be too tight. Go back through the crimp bead and back through the two beads. There's that little tail. And now we're going to pull the extra wire and make it smaller and smaller. You can see what's happening here. As I pull this, so I call this my tail sometimes. As I pull the tail, it gets up and gets closer and closer. It's looking good. Sometimes when you're doing this, this will lock up up here, all right? And you'll feel like, wait, it won't move. I can't do anything. What that means is your crimp has gotten too tight, too fast. So you need to move it down, sort of unlock the crimp, and then readjust and pull it again. So I've pulled this to where the excess is out of here, but it's still in the shape of the necklace or the bracelet if you were doing a bracelet. On this side, I need less of a loop. So I'll show you how small that is. Do you see that little bitty loop? I need less because all I'm, I'm, all I'm hooking to is this thin chain. It is soldered though, that's very important. All of our chain is soldered. Now I'm gonna take the flat nose plier or needle nose, whatever you like to call it, and I'm going to smash it very, very firmly. There it is. Remember that little tail? We're gonna have to snip that. The reason it's important that you snip nice and close is because if you don't, then this little guy just would irritate the back of your neck or your, or your wrist if it was a bracelet. So we always wanna cut very, very close. And to do that, you need nice, sharp cutters. You'll notice I'm putting my cutter sort of on top and I'm pulling this just a bit. And there it is. Two crimp beads, nice and secure. Oh, look at that little guy sticking out. Hold on, this can be better. You see that? That would be a bit of an irritant. So I'm gonna go back in you see that little little tail? I'm gonna go back in and try to get that out of there. Very gently so that you don't cut your main necklace. There we go. Now that little bit is gone. It's a nice clean ending. And we have a cute mushroom pearl necklace. This is probably one of the most common attachments that we do at the shop. 
after people string up their own piece, we offer this as a service, but it's great to learn to do it on your own as well. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.